So we'll be continuing a high yield session uh, series. So the topic is heart failure. So what are the causes of heart failure? Okay, there are innumerable causes of heart failure. Why I put this slide is the in India, this was asked in your exams. In India, the number one cause of heart failure is coronary artery disease. So whether you're dealing with HEFPEF, you're dealing with HEFREF, or heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction across the entire spectrum, the number one cause is coronary artery disease. In India, the number two cause is valvular heart disease followed by cardiomyopathy. So these are your three causes of heart failure in India. Okay. So what are the main causes of heart failure? So we, in India, the main cause of heart failure is coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is the leading cause of heart failure, whether it's HEFPEF, whether it is HEFREF, or heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction. So across the entire spectrum, the number one cause is CAD. This was asked in your uh, INSS exams. This is followed by cardiomyopathy as your second cause and valvular heart disease as your third cause. So the number one cause across the entire spectrum is coronary artery disease, an important MCQ for you. So how do you classify heart failure? The traditional classification is you classify it as HEFREF, which is reduced ejection fraction in the EF of less than 40%. HEFPEF where it is more than 50% and a poorly defined group called heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction or mildly reduced ejection fraction. Again, it's a poorly defined group. So this is your traditional classification. Now the ACC 2022 adds a fourth group. So this is heart failure with improved ejection fraction recognizing changes in LVEF is dynamic. So for example, you have a case of uh, cardiomyopathy. Let's say you have an ischemic cardiomyopathy with an EF of say 30%. Okay, so you do a bypass surgery, you do an angioplasty and subsequently your EF increases to something like 45%. This is heart failure with improved ejection fraction. Similarly, alcoholic cardiomyopathy, very poor EF, stops alcohol, alco the EF improves. So the ACC 2022 recognizes that the changes in LVF is dynamic and they have added a fourth group called heart failure with improved ejection fraction. So again, we'll, we'll go for the traditional teaching. So heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, mid-range ejection fraction and HEFPEF. So heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is a neurohormonal disease. So it is a neurohormonal disease. Okay. So by this, I mean that you have several hormones, neurohormonal changes occurring in your body with respect when you have a dilated, poorly contracting heart. So again, you can see this dilated, poorly contracting heart. Now there is decrease in cardiac output. So what are the changes occurring? One, you have the sympathetic nervous system getting stimulated. So release of sympathetic amines like adrenaline or noradrenaline. Two, you have the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, and ADH getting activated. So the there's decreased blood flow to the kidney, there is renin secretion, and hence your RAS and ADH gets activated. And number three, there is atrial and ventricular stretch. And for this, your natriuretic peptide system, natriuretic peptide system gets activated. So again, very, very important concepts. So again, when your SNS gets activated, you have an increase in heart rate, you have an increase in force of contraction, you have vasoconstriction occurring. When your RAS gets stimulated, so angiotensin is a potent vasoconstrictor, you have vasoconstriction, you have salt and water retention. And since ADH is secreted, you have free water retention. So it is water is retained more than salt. And finally, what does your natriuretic peptide system do? It causes natriuresis. So it ex excretes salt and water. So you have salt and water excretion and you have inhibition of the sympathetic nervous system as well as your RAS system. It is also antifibrotic and has a lot of beneficial effects. So stimulation of your SNS as well as RAS system, although helpful in your short run, is worse in the long run. Okay, and natriuretic peptide system obviously is good. So again, now you have three targets for action. So how do you target this? Okay, the first drug you give to inhibit SNS is a beta blocker. Okay, for RAS, for if you have RAS stimulation, you can inhibit it by giving ACE or ARBs. So you uh, block the angiotensin converting enzyme or you block the receptor. Similarly, again, you can have an giving an MRA, which is an aldosterone antagonist. And finally, you don't have a natriuretic pe peptide as such because the uh, recombinant natriuretic peptide 
trial actually failed. You instead increase the natriuretic system by giving uh, a succubitril. Succubitril is an inhibitor of neprilysin. So, neprilysin breaks down this natriuretic peptide. So, you give an inhibitor of natri of, uh, nepr of uh, neprilysin. So, you, you give something called as succubitril. Again, succubitril alone is not given. It is given in combination with an ARB and that ARB is called as valsartan. So, this is an ARNI, angiotensin receptor, neprilysin inhibitor. So, again, you have your sites of action. So, you have a beta blocker, you have ACE and ARBs, you have MRAs and you have ARNI. ARNI again blocks your ARB as well as uh, it uh, inhibits neprilysin and thereby increasing the degree of uh, natri uh, natriuretic peptide. Okay, so these are your targets. So, again, you have, can give a treatment of uh, heart failure reduced selection fraction is give a beta blocker number 1. Two, give ACE, ARB, number 3 is you can give an ARNI and number 4 is you can give a mineral mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. So, I will just combine both of this together. So, it is ACE, ARB or ARNI. Number 3 is you can give a mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist and number 4 is SGLT2 inhibitor which is the new kid on the block. Okay, again, how SGLT2, there we, nobody actually knows how it definitely acts. So, there are a lot of theories. So, what are your beta blockers of choice? There are only three beta blockers which can be given. Carvidilol, either you can give the normal preparation or the extended release preparation. Metaprolol and bisoprolol. So, carvidilol, either the short acting or the long acting preparation. Metaprolol, only the long acting preparation, which is metaprolol succinate and bisoprolol. Again, it is not enough to just start these do start these drugs. You, you have to achieve the standard trial dose. For example, you start carvedilol at 3.125 milligram, hike it up BD and hike it up to 25 milligrams BD. Again, what are the ACEs which are approved? Again, all the ACE inhibitors you know are pretty much approved. So it can be uh, enlapril, pirindopril, uh, ramipril, tradalopril, quinlapril. So almost all the ACE inhibitors you know are approved. What about ARB? There are only three ARBs which are approved. Which are they? They are Candisartan, they are Valsartan and Losartan. Okay, Telmisartan and uh, Olmisartan are wonderful agents for hypertension. They are not recommended in HFREF. So, only three ARBs are approved. Candisartan, Valsartan and Losartan. And obviously, only one ARNI which is a combination of Succubitril with Valsartan. Okay, what are your MRAs? They are Aldact Spironolactone and eplerinone. So, eplerinone is a receptor antagonist. So, it is pyronolactone and eplerinone. And what are your SGLT2 inhibitors which are approved? They are empagliflozin and dapagliflozin. So, your uh, AHA 2022 approves only to 10 milligrams of empagliflozin OD and 10 milligrams of dapagliflozin OD. So, these are your four drugs. So, these four drugs together are called the fantastic four. Okay, so neurohormonal modulation plays a central role in the pathogenesis of HFREF and offers treatment targets. All treatment which target the neurohormonal axis offer mortality and symptomatic benefits. So, what are your fantastic four? They are beta blockers plus ARNI plus SGLT2 inhibitor plus MRI. So, this is called your fantastic four. If you cannot give an ARNI, for example, when cost is of a particular concern, although its cost has come down because it has come under price control, now you can give ACE or ARBs. So, if cost is a control, you can go for ACE or ARBs. Always prefer ACE greater than ARBs. So, again, what are, so it's ARNI greater than ACE greater than ARB. In cardiology, ACE is always superior to ARB. So, again, this is your fantastic four. Beta blockers, RNE, SGLT2 inhibitors and MRAs. All your patients of HFREF, almost all your stage C symptomatic patients should be on these four drugs unless contraindicated. Okay. Now, if the patient is having a renal failure, then you cannot give ACE, ARB or RNE. Then you can give isosorbide dinitrate with hydralazine combination. Again, it's distinctly inferior to the above three agents, but if the patient is having a renal failure, then you can only give isosorbide plus hydralazine as a vasodilator of choice. Okay, so for you, you, all patients should be on these four drugs plus a diuretic for congestion. So usually we prefer loop diuretics like frusamide or tosamide, 
but occasionally we can also go for thiazide diuretics okay